I'd sort of dream about, you know, what would I have done back in the 90s if I'd had access to the kind of AI systems we have today? And I think you could build absolutely mind blowing games. Um, and I think the next stage is I always used to love making all the games I've made are open world games. Mm -hmm. So they're games where there's a simulation and then there's AI characters and then the player uh, interacts with that simulation and the simulation adapts to the way the player plays and i always thought they were the coolest games because uh so games like theme park that i worked on where everybody's game experience would be unique to them right because you're kind of co-creating the game right uh, we set up the parameters we set up initial conditions and then you as the player immersed in it and then you are co-creating it with the with the simulation but of course it's very hard to program open world games you know you've got to be able to create uh, content whichever direction the player goes in and you want it to be compelling no matter what the player chooses um and so it was always quite difficult to build uh, things like cellular automata actually type of those kind of classical systems which created some emergent behavior um, but they're always a little bit fragile a little bit limited now we're maybe on the cusp in the next few years five ten years of having ai systems that can truly create around your imagination um can sort of dynamically change the story and story tell the narrative around uh, and make it dramatic no matter what you end up choosing so it's like the ultimate choose your own adventure sort of game and uh you know i think maybe we're within reach if you think of a kind of interactive version of vo uh and then wind that forward five to ten years and um, you know imagine how good it's going to be yeah so you said a lot of super interesting stuff there so one the open world built into that is a deep personalization the way you've described it mm. so it's not just that it's open world like you can open any door and there'll be something there it's that the choice of which door you open in an unconstrained way defines the worlds you see so some games try to do that they give you choice yes but it's really just an illusion of choice because yes. you're only uh uh, like like Stanley Parable, this is yeah. a game I recently played. It's 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 really there's a couple of doors and it really just takes you down a narrative. Stanley Parable is a great video game. I recommend people yeah. play that. Kind of uh, in a meta way, uh, <laughs> mocks the illusion of choice and there's philosophical notions of free will and so on. But uh, I do like one of my favorite games of Elder Scrolls is Daggerfall, I believe that they really played with a like random generation of the dungeons yeah of if you can step in and they yes. give you this feeling of an open world and there you mentioned interactivity you don't need to interact that, that's a first step because you don't need to interact that much you just when you open the door whatever you see is randomly generated for you yeah and that's already an incredible experience because you might be the only person to ever see that yeah exactly and and so but what you'd like is a little bit better than sort of a random generation right so you'd like uh and and also better than a simple ab hard coder choice right that's not really uh, open world right as, as you say it's just giving you the illusion of choice what you want to be able to do is is potentially anything in that game environment um and i think the only way you can do that is to have uh generated systems systems that uh will generate that on the fly of course you can't create infinite amounts of game assets right it's expensive enough already how AAA games are made today and that was obvious to to us back in the 90s when i was working on all these games i think maybe black and white uh was the game that i worked on early stages of that that had the still probably the best ai learning ai in it it was an early reinforcement learning system that you you know you were you were looking after this mythical creature and growing it and nurturing it and depending how you treated it it would treat the villagers in that world in the same way so if you were mean to it it would be mean if you were good it would be protective and so it was really a reflection of the way you played it so actually all of the uh i've been working on sort of simulations and ai uh, through the medium of games at the beginning of my career and and really the whole of what i do today is still a follow-on from uh those early more hard-coded ways of doing the ai to now you know fully general learning systems that that are trying to achieve the same thing